Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba. thank you for joining me, let's play some more Factorio. So, I uh, took the time to put down a few lamps so that we can see a little bit better, hopefully that helps out a little bit. Notice that eventually we're gonna have to get some power over there. We have plenty of coal in our inventory from some of the other equipment that we were using earlier. So we'll get all this stuff queued up. I'll go, so, I'll go ahead and put some power... Um, actually, yeah, I ran the power on the wrong side of these as well. So we'll move that guy over. Let's see what I mean as soon as we... As soon as we need to upgrade power, it'll make more sense, probably. We'll run, run some lamps in here for no, no reason other than to make it look nice. You can see what's going on a little bit better. And I'd like to get a little bit of power on the coal area as well. Just throw a little bit more iron in here. Not quite all of it, but... Having more gears is useful. Okay, so we have the capacity to do red, some, some red research. Let's go ahead and knock out uh, logistics, so that we'll be able to do underground belt and stuff. We've got 463 transport belt available to go and start working on our new area. We only have 21 furnaces though, and we're going to need more than that. So let's go ahead and queue up 73. And now we're going to go build a very sizable smelting area. That's going to hopefully survive and, and last us for, well, pretty much the entire factory. I don't plan on needing to replace it. That's the goal. The factory is fairly autonomous now. It'll, it'll knock out all the red research for us with really no, no additional effort. You know, we only need to go back when we run out of transport belt or uh, electric poles. Electric poles will probably be a concern. Yeah, let's go get some of this wood. Normally, you don't have such a shortfall of wood, but it's all right. We also run a little bit slower in the desert. So it's going to take us a little bit longer to move around when we're trying to do stuff, but... It's also going to save a tremendous amount of actual time clearing out woods, so... I'm not going to complain. So that's as far as the power line needs to go, so this whole area can become smelting. This nice, beautiful, big area available. So let's start it. We're going to have all these resources come in over here. And then we'll probably have the the smelting area go down. So, we'll pick a spot. We'll call it like right here. And this will be where we start placing down the furnaces. So, we could... We could put them directly adjacent to each other. In which case, they would work perfectly well for stone furnaces up to steel furnaces, but then they wouldn't upgrade well into electric furnaces and eventually we are going to want to do electric furnaces and I do want to have just one area that works well for it so we're going to go ahead and, and do spacing on these let's start with 10 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 And one, one thing we're going to want to do, though, is I am going to use an old design that I haven't used in a long time to, a, to accommodate this, this ability to upgrade. Which is, we're actually going to leave an extra tile. Okay, so that knocked out logistics. That's good. Let's go ahead and get, uh, sure, let's get uh, electronics. You know what? I think I'd prefer it to be different. No. No. <laughs> no, I had it in the right spot. This is why blueprints are your friend. You know, you, you build something one way, and then you just never have to worry about it again.
Okay, so we're going to expand going that way. Which means that we can put a belt right here. We need a little bit more space for the splitters. So that'll be how we start that one. We need 10 times 2 times 2. So 40 inserters. Get started on this. Let's go grab some, some supplies. Need some circuitry. We are doing fine on gears. I actually just need iron. Let's get some iron being stored so that I can grab it from far away. This is actually probably overkill on copper for what we're doing right now. We're going to need more of this eventually. And it was more inserters that we needed the most right now. Let's grab the belt since we're here. Research is slow, but it's, it's fast enough. We did make 10 more of these guys, so let's put those down now. One less thing to worry about, right? Now I am running power with these burner inserters when we don't really need it. So it's kind of a force of habit to try to power this area, because a lot of times I'll not use burner inserters. But, um... We don't strictly need that to be there. We could actually connect the power in elsewhere. Maybe clean it up a little bit. Sure, why not? Okay, so you can go here. Run our guy underground. Over there. So now we have capacity for 10 megawatts, even though we're not going to use that just yet. Let's go ahead and get, um... What should we do? Sure, military, just so we can have a, a better gun to shoot stuff with. So that power system will work fine. I'd also like to do lights. Just for the sake of looking nice. So that'll be iron. However, we want this thing to be longer. We want it to be 30 long, and remember how I mentioned we're going to try to build this thing so that it's like ready to go. For a big, big amount of production. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we don't need to turn all these on, right? Like, spending the time to do that would be a little bit wasteful at the moment. But we want to place down at least the first, like, the top row. 
as a placeholder for the distance, like how far we need to take it. This whole time it's been putting coal in there for me, so now it's complaining saying I don't have enough coal to do that. So that's going to be one of the furnace columns. Let's do another one of these guys down to about here. Uh, for another column. Or row. I guess a row would make more sense since it's horizontal. And I think that having just just two will be enough to start with. We can go begin begin getting the main bus going, which will have a lot more a lot more throughput than the initial starting factory that we've got, which is also not doing any work right now. Let's go ahead and get that armor crafting going. Need two splitters, another underground belt. So the coal is going to come in from there, and then let's have it come down this way. Coal can go under. Although... That's not going to work too well when I want to... It would work better if we do this the other way. way I can do splitters on the coal since it's going vertically. So coal comes in. One goes either way. Let's reverse this guy too. So coal is going to come in from the top. Vertically, just coming down. And these are our copper and iron ore lines. Looks like we're out of transport belt. Get another nice little stack of that going. Let's get, uh, sure, walls. Why not? Because we need walls. Everything seems to be running just fine over here. I have no fuel, but these guys have plenty. Let's go ahead and grab a little bit, and... Now that we have splitters, we could try to get the, uh, the power area being powered automatically with the, the coal lines. The whole top row already ran out. Yeah, I think it's probably about time for that. So what's convenient is that this is going to be the coal line. I hope I'm running that the right, the right way. I can't tell. Looks like it. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so for now, the coal is just going to go through this one loop. Or this one, one thing, and then it's going to hop underneath here back down and merge in with this guy. Let's 
get steel processing going. And we're going to go ahead and, for now, we'll bleed off half of each of these feeds into the primary feed for the new smelting area. Okay, so we've got a fuel line heading over that way. And again, we're going to need to... This, this line will go away once we shut down this area. Let's go ahead and... Assuming that we continue to mine iron ore vertically, probably going to bring it over this way. So... Yeah, I think we'll just run it over that way and then somewhere past the copper we'll hop it underneath the iron... the... the, the other line. So, uh, let's go ahead and get this thing started. For now, I only want to bleed off just a little bit, like I don't want a huge amount of production to be taken from this rudimentary science area. So we'll just take an eighth. Or sorry, a quarter of it. So that should all be turning back on again with no issues. Little tiny bit of our iron ore is going to start heading over that way. We'll want to do the same thing with you, but eventually this thing's just going to go, we're going to have this go directly west. So... Just something to keep it, again, keep it mostly focused on producing in this area. We can knock out, sure, bullet damage. Even without biters, it's still going to be very useful. Killing rocks and stuff. Yep, and irons, you know, we took, took one-fourth of these, so it's not running it as well. Get a little bit low on transport belt. Doing okay on circuitry. Bullet damage is not very high priority, but... You know, what we really need is, uh, you know, let's let's not do that first. Let's do automation two first. Fuel's almost down here. Now we just need inserters, lots of them, in fact. We're gonna cut the line here temporarily, just so we don't end up with a huge amount of belt storage. Now, at this point, we're going to want to do something like this. You're going to come up to here. You're going to hop under all that guy. Because they have issues. When, they, when, when you actually get up to steel furnaces, they have issues having full, um, full compression on the last two. You just do that so you can use a splitter. Splitters are very good at, at forcing high compression on a belt. Oh, I hate when they do that. <laughs> the, no! They're getting all messy! No, no, I, I much prefer when they look like this, where they're nice and clean. You see the little lines? How can we make them do that? Let's try to fix it. 
There we go, that's better. Here, we'll do the interior ones first so that it's nice and straight. No! Don't, don't get all crazy on me, game. This is an unsolvable problem. Alright, well, I give up. It is what it is. Try not to let your OCD go nuts. I know mine is. Alright, so we have a very small amount coming through. We know how far how much space to reserve over here for expansion. And what we want to do, I think, is uh, we want to utilize a a load balancer so that as we speed up these belts in the future, it'll still work really well. So we're going to do something like that up here. We need some more underground belt. Actually, it's nice that there's a little bit of iron here because I'm kind of low. So we'll have you go, like, um, let's say... That'll be the start of our main bus. So you can just feed directly into there. And what this does, watch how beautiful this is. This is going to split half of it this way, half of it through there. This is just going to balance it out so that whatever comes in from this belt will equally be split amongst all the other belts. Just like that. You can already see it balancing itself out. It's all, um... It does weird things when it comes to, like, belt sides sometimes, but we're not going to use a, uh, anything else for that. We're going to leave two, two spaces in between. That'll be the one for the copper. I think we're ready to start increasing the amount of iron ore that we're getting in. Now we can start a, a nice, nice big proper bus that will work on science at a pretty good clip. But first things first, let's get, um... See if we can grab some more gears. And the goal at this point now is going to be to make it so we don't have to come over here as often. Okay, um, I'd like to clear this guy out of the way. Having to run it th right through the iron was kind of a nasty thing. Before we tap, like, the edges here, 
or even more. We can get a little tiny bit of extra production out of that guy, but let's let's just go in here. We'll go like here. Let's try to get two more. Nope. Totally out of totally out of uh, electrical poles. Jeez, that's gonna have to be like one of the very next things we research. And unfortunately, we're not getting enough iron in now to actually get get the the science really working. So let's shut down that little collector. And we'll get you hooked up. Up here. I'd like to go, like, kind of nuts on this guy and actually get lots of iron coming in. Iron's gonna be, like, the thing we need um, just an absolute ton of. This belt should be able to handle all these pretty easily, so I feel pretty good about that. There's definitely going to be enough coming that way, it's all going to end up now going... Since this is going to get totally backlogged, now this little one quarter split is going to take a full load in just a moment. Once this right side gets filled up, it should happen right about now. Now we're going to start seeing the right side fill in. Now pretty much... All of the irons are going to be going that way. Should be enough. So this thing's running non-stop. Um, we're doing fine on circuitry. We've got 400 belt in our pocket. Automation's about to complete. We've got enough, roughly enough, of this coming over. I think we're good to, to start setting up the primary bus. We're going to need a whole bunch more assembling machines. We're definitely going to need a bunch of splitters, an underground belt. First off, let's get rid of our iron ore and copper ore. Let's bring our copper down. I'd like to leave a little bit more space between here and where we actually start the bus. We're gonna have to take care of that guy eventually. Shotgun usually works better for that, but we have no wood. No wood in sight. Oh well. Alright, so first things first. Do we want to make gears locally? I think the answer is yes, we do. We don't want to build gears and have them go down the bus. We just want lots of really good iron throughput. So we'll start off with, um... Something simple. Get some bricks being made. We have Automation 2 now, which is nice. We can get... Uh, we're ready for green signs at this point. All that's really left is like bullet shooting speed and, and other stuff that doesn't really matter too much. And we're going to put down some brick. Alright, so first things first. Red science. Let's move red science production to over here. So we'll say that um, we want a little bit of space, like maybe four, four tiles. I'll call it three tiles past before we actually start any kind of production. So do that. 
one, two, three, four, five. So you guys are gonna make red. Here's our local gear production for science. We need our inputs. And outputs. And our power. We're gonna connect power in. Power is not allowed to be on the path. Path has power has to go in between these. And uh, let's go ahead and establish the the power lines along this top edge, and we'll connect everything in using that. So they need to go here. I'm gonna run out, aren't I? I found a tree. <laughs> Looks like we actually have enough iron coming in now, we can support a few more of these. So let's go ahead and I'll let the belt storage kind of work its way up. And if we have more inserters... I'm not actually sure how many I have. Yeah, kind of low. Need to find more wood. But, that's gonna do it for now. Uh, we'll work on this next part in the next episode. We'll probably try to get red and green both done and ready to go, and then we'll rapidly try to move into blue science and uh, oil production in the episode after that. We'll see how quickly we can actually make that happen. So, oh hey, look at all these trees. There's so many trees up here, excellent, cool. All right, I'm gonna take a break here. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching everyone, see you soon.